Hi, it's Dawn from Ninja Money Crochet. Today I have for us to do this car seat blanket. I made it with the two holes in it for the seat belts. You can make it with one hole or two holes, or if you need more holes, you can always put more holes in it. I did that because the new recommendations, or at least they're new to me because my kids are adults, are to not put the baby or toddler in a uh, snowsuit or a bulky jacket when you put them in the car seat because the jacket uh, stops the seat belts on the car seat from properly restraining the child and if you get into an accident the child can actually come out of the seat belts and get injured and the car seat is not properly restraining the child. So with the holes in here, the seat belts go through that so the child is properly restrained and the blanket stays secure on the child, thus keeping your baby nice and warm. Um, especially like I happen to live in New York and it gets pretty cold here. And also when you take the baby in and out of the car, like with those uh, infant car seats that have the handle on them, this blanket will stay on the baby and they won't kick the blanket off. The stitches that I used for this car seat blanket is the half double crochet, the crossover stitch, the bead stitch, and on the edging I made this nice simple border of a single crochet with the chain stitches in between. The yarn that I used to make this is Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. It comes in a 10 ounce ball. 283 grams, 420, 482 yards, uh, and it's 440 meters. This is a medium for 100% acrylic yarn if you're looking to for a substitute yarn. You will use the whole ball to make this car seat blanket. The edging I use Red Heart Super Saver, and I use, and the color is Real Teal. The, this color is Deep Teal. I only used about maybe 50 to 60 yards to do the edging. Today's tutorial, I'm going to be using Karen Jumbo Ombre. The reason I want to try it in this one is because I believe it, this yarn is softer and I think the uh, it'll come out just as nice. I did do a swatch with this type of yarn and the um, gauge is the same. All of my gauge, the gauge information for this project and the size of the blanket will be in the description box below if you want that information as well. Though I believe for this particular project, gauge is not as critical, but if you'd like that information, it will be in the description box below. The hook size that I used is an I 5.5 millimeter hook. Today I'll be using my Clover Amore hook. You will need a pair of scissors. To cut your yarn. You will need a, a yarn needle to weave in your ends and you probably will want to have a couple of stitch markers. Now you don't need to use these fancy locking stitch markers. You can just use a, diff a piece of yarn in a different color. But the chain three and the chain two in this pattern when you use your turning chain will count as a stitch and I find that stitch markers really do help to find that on the return pass. So once you have all of your supplies, let's get started. Before I jump into today's tutorial, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that little icon down in the corner there. That'll automatically subscribe you to my channel. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell because that'll automatically let you know when I upload a new video. And if you like content like this, please give it a thumbs up because that lets YouTube know that you like my videos. And it also lets me gauge what types of videos that you like to see on my channel. So to start the car seat blanket, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook and a chain of 77. So just keep chaining until you get to 77 and then come on back and we'll start our project. Now that we have our chain of 77, we're going to start second chain from hook. The loop on our hook does not count as a stitch. And I like to start my projects by flipping my chain over onto the back side of the chain and working into these back bars of the chain. So we're going to go one, 
two and start in the second chain with a half double crochet. And we're going to work one half double crochet into each one of the chains. Continue working one half double into each chain all the way down the length of the chain and I will meet back up with you at the end of the chain. We're at the end of row one. We have 76 half double crochet. To start row two, we're going to chain one and turn the work. In that very first stitch, we're going to place a half double crochet and we're going to half double crochet in each stitch across. We're going to do this for row two and row three. Your stitch count will remain the same. Put one half double crochet into each stitch all the way across for row two then chain one, turn, and put one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across for row three. Both rows will have 76 stitches. I'll meet back up with you at the end of row three. We're at the end of row three. We have still have 76 half double crochet. To start row four, we're going to chain up three, one, two, three. This chain three will count as a stitch, so grab your stitch marker and we're going to mark the top of the chain as the first stitch. Turn your work. Since this counts as our first stitch, this one right here is worked, so we're going to put a double crochet into that next stitch. So now we have two double crochets and now we're going to begin the crossover stitch. And to do that, we skip this next stitch and we work one double crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, and three. We're going to reach back and work a double crochet into that stitch that we just skipped right there. So yarn over, reach your hook back and insert it into that stitch. So you're going to insert it all the way through, grab the yarn, pull it through, and you're going to make sure that, loose, that loop is nice and loose. Yarn over and you're going to complete your double crochet. And there you have this nice little crossover stitch. Now we're going to skip the next stitch. Make sure you're not talking about this one right here because that one right there is, is, has been worked. You're going to skip this stitch right here and we're going to work one double crochet into the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. And we're going to reach back to that skip stitch again. So this one right here that we skipped. Yarn over, reach back into that skip stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and complete your double crochet. I'll show it to you one more time. This stitch has been worked. We're going to skip this one and work three double crochets, one in the each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And again, 
yarn over, reach back to that skipped stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, and complete your double crochet. You're going to continue working your crossover stitch all the way down the row until your last two stitches and I'll meet back up with you when you get to two stitches left. We're at the end of row four. We have two stitches left and we're going to put one double crochet into each of those stitches. One, two. So you should have 18 of the crossover stitches and four double crochet, two on either end. To start row five, we're going to chain up one, turn the work, and we're going to place one half double crochet into each stitch. And that's going to be for row five through row seven. It's going to be the exact same thing. You're going to have 76 half double crochet. So one half double crochet into each stitch for row five and row seven. I will meet back up with you at the end of row seven. We're at the end of row seven. We have 76 half double crochet. To start row eight, we're gonna chain up three. One, two, three. And we are gonna mark the top of that stitch with a stitch marker. Cause that is gonna be our first double crochet. Turn the work. And this stitch right here is worked. So we're going to go to the next stitch and double crochet. We're going to work the bead stitch next. And how that stitch is worked is you yarn over and we're going to work the stitch around the post of the stitch we just made. We go around the post and pull up a loop. I'm going to do that three times. So one, two, three. Yarn over and we're going to go through all the loops except for the last loop. Then we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through those remaining two loops and that produces this nice little bead stitch. Skip the next, the next stitch and we're going to go to the next one and we're going to double crochet. And double crochet into the next stitch. And we have a yarn monster crawling up here. And now we're ready to do our next bead stitch. And we're going to do that around this last stitch that we made. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to go around the post, pull up a loop. I'm going to do that three times. So that's two, three. Yarn over, go through all the loops except for the last one. Yarn over, and we're going to go through those last two loops. And we made another bead stitch. Skip the next stitch. And we're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. One. And two. And I got a yarn monster following me again. So I'm going to show you that bead stitch one more time. Yarn over and we're going to go around the post of the last stitch that we made. One, two, and three. Yarn over, 
go through all the loops except for the last one, yarn over, and pull through that last loop. And there we have it. Skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, so we're going to repeat that until we get to the last stitch, and I'll meet back up with you when we're at the last stitch. We're at the end of row eight. We have two stitches left. We're gonna skip the next stitch, and then that last stitch, which I did mark with my stitch marker, we're gonna put a double crochet. And that ends the row. You should have 25 of these bead stitches and in between each of the stitches you will have a double crochet and remember your last your chain stitch in the beginning counts as a double crochet. To start row 9 chain up 1, turn the work, and we're going to put one half double crochet into each stitch and you can go ahead and mark that first stitch if you'd like. That's completely up to you. Really the stitch markers are for when that you're using the uh, chain three but you can use it now too if you want. And for row this is row 9, so we're going to do half double crochet for row 9, 10, and 11. So one half double crochet into each stitch. I will meet back up with you at the end of row 11. We're at the end of row 11 for rows 12 for row 32. We're going to repeat rows 4 through 8. We're just going to keep going through that repeat of row 4 to row 8 or row 4 to row 8 until we reach row 32. I'll start you off on row 12 which is going to be a repeat of row 4. So we're going to chain up 3 1, 2, 3. Put in our stitch marker to mark the top of the chain because that counts as a stitch. Turn our work and this is going to be a cross over stitch row. This very first stitch counts has already been worked because it counts the chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next three stitches. going to go back to that skip stitch and put in a double crochet. So yarn over, reach back to that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and complete your double crochet. Just like that. Skip the next stitch, double crochet, and the next three stitches. Careful not to get your crossover double crochet too tight. So you might want to make sure you have a nice loose stitch there. So reach back, pull up your loop, and complete your double crochet. So this is row 
is row 12 is a repeat of row 4 and this is going to start your repeats so you're going to do 4 through row um, let me pull my, row 8 and row 8 is your bead stitch row so row 4 through row 8 so you're just going to keep repeating this portion until you get to row 32 and I'll meet back up with you at the end of row 32. We're at the end of row 32 we still have the same number of stitches which is the 25 bead stitches and we're going to start row 33 so we're going to chain up one and turn the work we're going to put one half double crochet into each stitch all the way across the row I will meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row 33. We have 76 half double crochet. To start row 34, we're going to chain one, turn the work. We're going to put one half double crochet into the next 32 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, 30, 31, and 30. Let's pull out a little bit more yarn. Once we have our 32 half double crochets, chain up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Then skip the next 12 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Go to that next stitch, put a half double crochet, and you're going to half double crochet in the rest of the stitches, so it should be including this one, 32, to the end of the row, and I will meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row 34. We now have 64 half double crochet and 12 chains. So we have a 12 uh, chain space. This is the hole where, your, where the seat belt will go through. To start row 35, we're going to chain up one, turn the work. And we're going to put one half double crochet into each of the uh, half double crochets and one half double crochet into each one of the chains. Now you can put a half double crochet, 12 half double crochets into the chain space if that's easier for you. That is completely up to you. So go ahead and work your half double crochets, one into each stitch one into each chain or 12 into the chain space, whichever is easier for you to do. And I will meet back up with you at the end of row 35. We're at the end of row 35. We now have our 76 half double crochets. To start row 36, we're gonna go ahead and chain up 33. Excuse me, chain up three, not 33. So chain up three turn the work. Now if you are using your stitch markers 
we're going to go ahead and mark the top of that turning chain as your first stitch. This is going to be a crossover row. So we're going to go ahead and now work in the, this first stitch is worked, so we're going to work our first double crochet in that next stitch. Skip the next stitch and work three double crochet into the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Then reach back and grab that stitch that you skipped. Just the same thing you've been doing. You're just your crossover stitch. And you're going to continue working your crossover stitch all the way across the row. Skip the next stitch. Work one double crochet in the next three stitches. So this is nothing different. Reach back, grab that skip stitch, pull it up tall, and complete your double crochet. So go ahead and continue working your crossover stitch all the way to the end of the row, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row 36, we have 18 crossover stitches, and then we have our four double crochets, two on either end. From this point until we get to row 45, we're just going to keep working in the same pattern that we have been working in. You're going to do a um, next, it's going to be three rows of half double crochet, then a row of bead stitch. So you're going to continue that till you get to row 45, which will be a row of half double crochet. Then we're going to do another section where we're going to put a seat belt hole. Then we're going to continue in pattern again until we reach row 59, and that will be our last row. will be row 59, and that should be um, a row of half double crochet. Row 57 to 59 will be your last three rows of half double crochet. Now, if you do not want to put a second hole in, second seat belt hole in, you just continue working in pattern. Um, your, beads, your bead stitch, your half double crochet, and your crossover stitch until you get to your last three rows of half double crochet, which is row 57 through 59, and then you'll come back and we will work the edge row. So work your pattern till you get to your to row 45 and that'll be your row that you're going to be putting your next seatbelt hole in or you work in pattern to row 59 which will be your last row of your blanket. Either way I will meet back up with you at the end of row 59. We're at the end of row 59 we still have 70 six half double crochet and we're going to work the border around the entire blanket. If you're changing colors like I did in my first example, you are, can go ahead and fasten off this uh, your main color and we're going to go ahead and attach the new color. If you're going to keep the same color like we're going to work this time, you're going to go ahead and chain one and turn the work. In this very first stitch, we're going to go ahead and put two single crochets. Work one single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. In the very last stitch, you're going to place three single crochets to turn the corner. I will meet back up with you at the end of the row and show you how to work down the ends of the rows to 
the bottom corner. We're at the end of the row and we're going to go ahead and put three single crochets in that last stitch. So one, two, and three so that we can turn the corner. I'm going to start working down the ends of the row. So in our half double crochet stitches, we're going to put one single crochet in each of those. That's one, two, three. In the double crochet rows, we'll put three single crochets. So one, two, three, just like that. And then we're back to half double crochet. And we're going to put one in each row. So one, two, three. And now we come up to a double crochet row. We'll put three, one, two, and three. Now you can work that stitch into the double crochet or you can work it around the double crochet. That's really up to you. Now we're back up to half doubles. So we go one, two, and three. And back into a double crochet row. We get down to the corner. We're going to put three double crochets to go, three single crochets to go around the corner at the bottom down here. So into this first stitch right here we'll put three single crochets and then we're going to work around in the bottom of the chain, the underside of the, the starting chain, one single crochet in each stitch. Again, the end of the very last stitch, we put three, and then we'll be working back up the other side, doing the same thing we're doing on this side. One single crochet in each of the half double crochet rows and three single crochets in the double crochet row. And when we get back to where we started, we'll put a slip stitch to join. And I will meet back up with you at the end when we're going to slip stitch to join and we'll start row two. Made it all the way back around. We're going to go ahead and slip stitch to join. We are not going to turn our work. We're going to chain one to start round two. We're going to go ahead and single crochet right back into the same stitch we just slip stitched into. Let me get my yarn pulled out here. Chain one and put another single crochet right back into that same stitch. For our corner, so our corner is going to be single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, 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 single crochet, chain one. You're going to repeat that all the way around in the corners, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. When you get back around, slip stitch to join and fasten off and weave in all your ends and you're all done. I'll meet back up with you when we're all done. Hey, okay, here's our finished uh, car seat blanket. We have our one our seatbelt hole right there, and we have our second seatbelt hole, which is off camera here, is down here. So here's our blanket that we just worked together, and then here's the original one that I had in the beginning, made with the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. So this is with the uh, Karen Ombre yarn, and this is with the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre yarn. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And thanks for watching and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.